I say that the violent people that I saw in the prisons were lacking in nonviolent means of maintaining or restoring their self-esteem. I mean, all of us in this room have lots of nonviolent ways of maintaining our self-esteem. An education, uh, a profession, some esteem in the eyes of our family and friends and so forth. The people I saw in the prisons had, with rare exceptions, little or none of that. They were often illiterate, poverty-stricken, homeless, had been discriminated against, um, on and on. Um, a second important thing is simply, is the humiliation overwhelming? The people I saw in the prisons, the most violent of them, taught me something that I had never read about before, uh, I hadn't expected, uh, but I would hear this over and over again from the most uh, extremely violent uh, members of that community. They would say that they had died before they started killing other people. Uh, that their personality had died. They felt dead inside. Uh, what, they, what, what they meant by that was they felt numb. They felt empty. Uh, they would use words to describe themselves. They'll refer to the walking dead, like zombie, or vampire, or robot, and so forth. It was clear that this feeling of deadness was more tormenting to them than even physical pain. So they would often mutilate their own bodies, not because they, they felt guilty about their crimes. This wasn't penance or self-punishment. They were trying to see if they could have feelings because they found it so tormenting to just feel numb and, and dead. Um, so when I would ask them you know, the, the story of their lives and sort of how did this come about, inevitably it would come back to some sort of overwhelming and ongoing humiliation an experience where they felt trapped and uh, regarded as worthless, regarded as they would use language I won't repeat here to describe how they, uh, what they felt they were treated like. Um, and uh, again, that's something, you know, every, as I said, everybody's been insulted at one time or another, but these are people who really felt they had never, ever uh, experienced, uh, you know, being really cherished by, by somebody or respected by somebody. Um, a third thing that I can hardly emphasize too much is, though, the gender role that a person was socialized into. I talked earlier about biological causes of the discrepancy between male and female violence rates. But I think a much more powerful cause of the male preponderance of violence committing acts is that in all patriarchal cultures, men are socialized into a gender role where masculinity requires violence under many well-recognized circumstances to prove that the person is really a man. Um, and it can work. It can actually, at least temporarily, restore the feeling of potency and respect. Um, I've had violent men described to me how much it thrilled them to see the fear in their victim's eyes 